Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of ombre, very pink uh, slimline cards. I was inspired by the stamp set, which I'll get to in a second, because first I want to do my background. And I'm using the Picket Fence Studios Lots of Blossoms 6x8 stencil. And I was pretty sure I could get two card fronts with just using like the stencil as is. So I have a full sheet of cardstock here. I think this is a Concord 9th. Is it Ballet Slipper? I think that's the color. Just a nice light pink cardstock. And I've taped my stencil to the cardstock with some pixie tape. And then I'm going to use three different shades of um, paper glaze paste from Picket Fence. The first two are Lux uh, paper glazes. These ones have like a little bit of glitter in them. I've used these in other videos and oh, one they spread like butter, you know, and they got a bit of glitter and just the, col the colors, the colors. So the first one is uh, Cherry Blossom, just a really pretty light pink. And I applied that to the top third or so of the pattern. And then the second one is Pink Magnolia. So just a really pretty medium shade of pink. And again, this one's got a little bit of glitter in it. So apply that to the center. And then I kind of went back and forth a little bit to kind of blend. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not too concerned about it. Once it's cut down and it's on the card, it's, it's you know, the little bit of um, variation and, you know, the, the not perfect blending. It's, again, perfection's overrated. So the third one, this is a uh, paper glaze velvet. So these ones have, it's harder to explain. They're, they're, they have a shimmer to them, but it's subtle. It's very subtle. The other ones, the ones that say paper glaze lux have a bit more of a glitter. Whereas these velvet ones, yeah, they just have this like really pretty, just subtle shimmer. And this one is pink tinsel. So I did the same thing, kind of applied it to the, the bottom third and then went, you know, back and forth a little bit with my palette knife. And then once I've got it all applied, I am going to remove the tape, remove my stencil, wash my stencil, always, always. Either put it in a container, you know, of water or take it to your sink and wash them. It's just so much easier to clean your stencils when the paste is still wet. Yeah, yeah. I just, and literally all I do is just rub it between, gently between my hands with like either a little bit of dish soap or just some soap and water, cleans them up, let them air dry, they're good to go. So I set that aside to dry. And then for my like main image, I'm using this fabulous Flamingos stamp set. Oh, you guys, the set is, uh, it's so different. I, when I opened the package, I was like, what? <laughs> I never would have thought of doing something like this. And the set was also huge. It is a four by 12 stamp set. These images are big. A lot of picket fence images are quite large, you know, more geared towards bigger cards, slimline cards, five by seven, etc. And I'm kind of liking it. It just gets me out of the zone. Plus, again, Lord, this is this applies to you know my love for large florals. It's a different, definitely a unique one. I never would have thought of a flamingo with a rose like this, but large florals every time. So I'm using just one of the flamingo images. There's two different flamingo in images in this set and I am stamping them onto um, Simon's smooth white 120 pound cardstock with Simon's intense black ink because I want to do some alcohol marker coloring. So inking up the stamp, I, I, I got a perfect impression like the very first time, but it's also just habit to stamp more than once <laughs> just to make sure I get all, all the details, all of it, every little bit. Um, with regardless of what uh, alcohol marker ink you're using, because there's many out there now from so many different brands and like tons of them work wonderfully. When you're stamping things more than once, you either need to let it, give it longer to dry, heat set it, etc. Because the more stamping, like layers of stamping you do before you start coloring, the longer the ink takes to dry, the bigger chance you'll get of smearing. I've, I've been asked that quite a bit. And usually I just blast it with my heat tool and then go on about my day. So either one works. Let it air dry for longer. Some people let it dry for night. I don't think it needs to take that long, but whatever works. So right now this is real time coloring. Um, I will be speeding it up and editing. This didn't take that long. This, this is another one of those images where it looks a lot more intimidating to color 
than it actually is. Because this one has all that line detail in it. So it's just a guide of where to add your shading because all the little line detail, the shading is already there. So I just followed that. And I, I kid you not, I just slap color on. I'm using my Spectrum Noir tri-blends. I only use two markers to do all the coloring. The, the rose and, and the flamingo, I'm gonna use the same thing. I'm using the magenta blend and just going darkest to lightest. So I put the darkest color where all the line shading was on the image. And then I use my medium shade to pull that out a bit and add a bit and then finally went in with my lightest shade and went over all of it and when I say I slapped the color on legit slapped it on tried not to overthink it just did it once it was done it was like oh look at it. like if I can do this anybody can do this <laughs> so I colored the rose and then I just use the same colors for the rest of the flamingo there's not a whole lot of coloring there like there's that little bit of the beak and then I decided to use just the darkest shade and I colored right over the neck just to fill in those little areas. Plus it just gives it that little extra something. And then for the leaves, oh, and I also use my Copic Colorless Blender just to clean up the little, the couple little spots where, you know, I went outside the lines because it happens. And then for the leaves, I use the light green blend. Same thing. Apply the darkest where, you know, most of the line detail and shading was, then my medium, then my lightest, add a little bit more of the dark. I repeated the process on the second image because like I said, I was pretty sure I was going to be able to get two cards out of the stencil background. So after they were colored, I used the coordinating wafer dye to die cut these out and took a few extra seconds just to make sure I got everything lined up before I die cut because again, these are big images. So my background is dry. I'm going to trim it down. Um, yeah, I, I'm really glad I got this rotary trimmer. I'm still, I'm still working with it more so. And I can't remember if I've uploaded the video yet or like posted it for you guys. Or not. I'm like, I'm shockingly working ahead. Who'd have thought? Um, but yeah, I just recently purchased this. Like it only came out, what, a few weeks ago. But it, for me, it's more than muscle memory. I'm so used to my guillotine trimmers. So it's still taking me a little bit to get used to, but every time I use this trimmer, I'm really liking it. So I trimmed down my background and it's slightly smaller than six by eight because I the, there's a little bit of a border, you know, uh, around the stencil. So I had to do a little bit of math to figure out how to trim this in half because it's not quite six inches. It was like five and three quarters or something. So I did a little bit of math to figure out what the center point was so I could cut these in half. So I've got two um, little panels here and then I'm going to trim down some black cardstock to slightly larger that I'll mat and I'll do that when I start assembling the card. And then my card bases, I just grabbed a couple of pre-cut and scored slimline card bases from Simon Says Stamp. I keep a stash of different sizes of their card bases because it's just convenient. <laughs> a lot of times I make more often than not you guys see me I just make my own you know card bases on camera but sometimes it's nice to just grab and go. So that's what I did and I folded the cards card bases inside out put them in my misty and then I stamped that big flamingo with Simon's bubblegum positively saturated ink so just nice light pink ink. So stamped that onto the inside of both of these cards. And then I took, I pulled a couple of sentiments from that same stamp set and decided which one I wanted to use on the inside of the card. Because I wasn't sure at first. I was like, was I going to put the larger sentiment on the outside or did I want it on the inside, etc. So made my decision, lined that up on the inside of the card. And I'm going to stamp that with that same intense black ink. And again, just inking it up and stamping it twice. Old habits. It, it's muscle memory. <laughs> so inked it up, stamped it, inked it up again, stamped it, put in the other card base there, and then stamped that onto the inside of the second card. So now the insides of my cards are all pretty. And again, like this, I don't know, just oh, this image is fabulous. Just like the sentiments. Sentiments are fabulous. The stamp set's fabulous. Fabulous flamingos. Love it. So 
got those stamped. And then for the sentiments I want to use on the front of the card, I just grabbed um, leftover black cardstock from cutting the panels that I'm going to use for matting. I have it sitting here. So I just used my anti-static powder tool and I inked up the uh, sentiment with clear embossing ink. And then I'm going to coat that with white embossing powder and top uh, tap off the excess. Once I've got that done, I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. And yeah, the sentiment, you look fabulous. <laughs> It just works. So melted that with my heat tool. Once those were smooth and melted, gave it a couple seconds to cool down. And then I just wipe off that excess anti-static powder with one of my microfiber cloths. And then I'm going to die cut that with the coordinating wafer die. So I'll die cut those sentiments. Same thing. I had to literally hunt all around my desk to find my little bit of washi tape. I just use the washi tape to hold the wafer dies in place so they don't shift when I run them through my die cut machine. So I did all of that. And then I pulled out some tonic vellum. This is the pearled silver vellum. It is so pretty. So pretty. It's just... It just has that nice bit of a sheen to it. This one is not iridescent. The, the Lawn Fawn iridescent vellum, that's another must have, um, has more of that like rainbowy holographic kind of reflect to it. Also very beautiful. This I went with this one though because I wanted it to be a little more subtle. Um, in the end, you're not really, you could just use regular vellum because you're not going to really notice, but I have it, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> and then I'm going to ink up. I used my anti-static powder. And then there's three little butterfly images in the set. And I just stamped them with VersaFine Clear Nocturne ink. I should have stamped them with clear, I think. Because my ver my Nocturne ink pad, I just recently re-inked it. So it's super juicy. So I kind of lost a little bit of the detail. Especially on those tiny, tiny little butterflies. And then, this is the one time I break my rule of no black embossing powder. If you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you know I... Oh, black embossing powder. It's the devil. <laughs> it's the worst. But on vellum, it's perfect. It's a subtle difference, but there, I, I can genuinely see it. When you stamp in black and embossing clear on vellum, it's obvious. It just, it kind of dilutes the black. It's, it's weird. It's just, it, again, it's a subtle thing. And if you're more comfortable with stamping in black and embossing in clear on vellum, it's fine. But I find that black embossing powder just keeps the detail, keeps everything looking crisp on vellum. I don't use it on anything else because it just is oh, black embossing powder. It's the worst. It gets everywhere. It's messy. I have knocked over containers of it, I, mm, but it does look beautiful on vellum. <laughs> and on vellum because of the, the, the smoothness of vellum, black embossing powder doesn't cling to it like it does to other like cardstock. Because again, if you've worked with black embossing powder and you've tried heat embossing on just any regular cardstock, it just clings to everything it's like it's like soot you know it, it's weird that's why I hate it but I keep that container around for things like this so anyway there's my rant on black embossing powder I, after I was done embossing those butterflies I die cut them with their coordinating wafer dies and then I'm going to assemble my cards so my ombre stencil backgrounds I matted with some black cardstock and then adhered to my card bases and then once those are adhered, to adhere my flamingos, I'm going to use uh, foam squares. One, for dimension. And two, when you're adhering on top of things you've stenciled with full-on stencil paste, you know, you've got a lot of texture and all that. Um, you either need just like good, strong liquid adhesive, which works great. Or I, uh, my personal favorite, I really like using things like foam squares, foam adhesive. Because one, it pops up the images for dimension. But also it just... The foam, you know, really just kind of gets in there and holds everything in place. So I used foam squares, trimmed some down so I could fit them into the little more narrower parts of these images. And then I'm going to pop these onto the cards. And now you can kind of get an idea of just how big these stamps are. Because these are three, just over three and a half inches by eight and a half inch slimline cards. And then, of course, I had to add some shimmer. So I'm using my Tonic Aqua Shimmer um, Clear Glitter Gloss brush and just painting over these entire images. And, of course, at the end, I will show with my flashlight the glitter because it's amazing. And it was 
perfect. It was perfect for these cards. Meant to be. You know, you need, you need the pink and the ombre and the glitter. It just... Love. <laughs> It's not just for these cards, though. You need it on every card, basically. You guys know. I like to throw everything but the kitchen sink at my cards. So, painted the entire thing. I was only going to do the rows, and then once I start, I can't stop. So, I painted the entire image with the Aqua Shimmer pen. And then I'm going to pop the sentiments into place with foam tape again. And then my little butterflies are going to be my embellishments. I was going to add, of course, I was going to add bling and all the things. But I was like, no, I've got, like... The texture, the background, the ombre, the image, the shimmer, the glitter, we're good. We're good. I know. I know. So anyway, adhered those in place with just little dabs of glue just on the bodies, kind of behind that little black area on each butterfly so you won't see the adhesive. And then their wings are popped up just a little bit, you know, again, just that little bit of dimension. And then here I'm going to turn on the flashlight so you guys can actually see the glitter because it's amazing. Look at it. Look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? Love. <laughs> so anywho, that was my cards. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In my blog post, it's picture links to all the products I use in my supply list. So it's just a little easier to navigate. So you can check that out if you're interested. I will also, of course, have a supply list under the video as well. Um, with links to everything I used. So you can check that be out below if you are interested in any of it. And as always, thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. It legit, legit helps. It does make a difference and I very much appreciate it. And I love reading your guys' comments. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.